Welcome. I am so glad that you are here with me today. It is an exciting day because we are going to be taking a look at the brand new Joyous Noel collection that just released a couple days ago. And this project today is just jam packed with technique. So let's get right to it because I don't want to run out of time. So, all right. I'm so glad you're here. Let's get this camera switched over. All right, there we go. We are going to be creating this Joyous Noel gatefold card. It's a fun project and I'm looking forward to sharing these techniques with you. All right, so to, to begin, we're going to, usually I begin with the stamping, but today we're actually going to begin with the um, gatefold. I think that that will be uh, the better way to go. So it looks like we've got a little bit of lag. Okay, so to begin, I need you to take out a white sheet of paper and you're gonna cut that paper to 12 by seven inches. Okay, I've got my little notepad there to remind me of the size, but you're gonna wanna cut that to 12 to seven inches. And let's take a quick look at our beautiful collection. Okay, so our collection for the Joyous Noel has this beautiful starry Noel angel. Isn't she just lovely? She's got, it's like she's rising up out of the stars there and she's going to combine so well with the uh, starry uh, collection that released a few weeks ago because of her uh, stars in there. And then we have this, this gorgeous dove with the, the Christmas bow in his mouth, just a very nice pieces in there. Then we have this decorative die that we're going to be using quite a bit today. So you can set that one aside. We're going to use that in straight away. And we have this beautiful set of angels. I'll turn that over so you can see. We have the, the they're a little bit smaller than our starry angels, so they pair really well to go on the same card. We've got one holding the dove, and then we have the, the pretty harp that you can uh, put in this one's hands which is a, a fun thing to do. And one of everyone's favorite piece from this collection, it seems to be, is this joyous Noel background, which we're also going to be using today. So you can set that one aside. And this is just a really fun piece. All right, so let's go ahead and open up our uh, uh, Noel decorative die. It comes with two pieces. We've got the outer edge and we've got the inner decorative piece. Now this inner decorative piece, when it cuts out, it very much looks like angel's wings when they designed this. So it really just complements. it kind of comes out like this and you have these beautiful angel wing looks. So it complements this set very, very well. So we're not gonna use the decorative piece at the moment, but we're gonna start out. You're gonna take your uh, outline piece here and line it up so the tip is right up against the edge of your paper here. Now these two little pieces at the edge, they're gonna come off your paper just a little bit. So if you look real close, try to get those as even as possible. Just maybe an 18th of an inch on each side. It's just a little bitty bit, but try to keep those equal. You don't wanna get it like this where the big gap is on one side and none on the other. You wanna to try to get those uh, gaps equal. All right, so once you get that down, whoops. I'm going to use just a little bit of washi tape or whatever you use to tape your uh, your dies in place. You can go ahead and do that. And I like to tape it three times. Once right down here at the base. And then I also go ahead and tape up here at the corner. And when I put my tape on these corners, I just put the tape on the metal and then on the part up here that's not going to be used that way just in case my tape tears my paper any it won't tear my uh, project okay so once you get this die all taped down like that i'm going to show you how i put this into my uh, uh, sandwich to run it through my die cut machine and i'm using a uh, gemini plates but whatever die machine that you have as long as it's its mouth is eight inches wide this die will go through just fine but i'm going to demonstrate here so when i lay it down i lay it down purposely so that this edge is hanging out of my die machine then i like to take my washi tape again whoops have that age-old problem and not putting my glasses on there we go. Okay, so I take my washi tape and again, 
I like to tape it just on the corners like this just to hold it in place so that that doesn't uh, move when I run it through my machine. Now, once I get it all tight taped down, I like to flip it over and look at the back and make sure I've got this uh, pretty straight because you don't want to cut that and have it super crooked. So I like to flip it over and, and give that a check. Okay, so once it's like this, we can go ahead and run it through our machine. Now, all this flappy paper part is going to go on through the machine just fine. Now, if you happen to have a switch or something like that, you can back it up. You don't have to run it all the way through. If not, once those plates go through, just go ahead and catch them and pull the rest of that paper on out. Okay, so you're going to do that. And that is going to give you this right here. So as soon as you get it like this, you're going to turn it around and you're going to do the exact same thing to the other end. Now, what I like to do on the when you get to the to do the other end, once I, I glue my piece all down and everything, this little piece that cut off, I like to lay it on there and make sure that it's the same. That way, when it closes, my two pieces meet up because sometimes if you're just eyeballing, you might get that off so you can use this little piece that cut off, you can kind of use that as a guide to make sure you have it the same on both ends. So that, that's just a little tip for that. All right. So once you've done that, you'll end up with this right here where you have your, your decorative edge cut out on both ends. So the next thing you're gonna wanna do is pull out a scoreboard and line it up and you're gonna wanna score at three inches on both ends. So you just do it on one end, then flip it over, and you're gonna to wanna to do it on the end. So you're gonna to wanna to do that at the three inch mark. Now, depending on where you put your die on the ends, this is gonna be approximately five and three quarter, maybe six on the inside, but it, it's gonna be a little different for each of us depending on how we did that. So once you get to this point, go ahead and fold over and score, and if everything has gone uh, gone well, they're gonna meet up right there in the middle. Now, like I said, depending on where you put your die when you did this, some of you, it may overlap, some it might just barely touch, or you might have a little gap. Either way, any way that is, it's still gonna uh, work just fine for our project. Okay, so there we've got our gatefold using the, the decorative, the Noel decorative die. So the next thing we're going to do is out of the paper pad, out of sheet 6A, I'm going to have you cut two of these, and I like to do that right down here. Whoops, sorry, I'm out of the camera. We're gonna do it right down here is one, and then over here is one. And go ahead and die cut those. Out of this section right here, we're gonna cut a piece that is five and a quarter, I'm sorry, five and three quarter by seven. So let me say that again, five and three quarter by seven and that's going to go on the inside of our card all right now out of the very center of that we're going to take the circle basic large die and the one that measures one and seven fifths by one and seven fifths right in the center of that piece you're going to cut one of those out okay all right, so once we have our die cutting out, the next thing we're going to do is grab a piece of our Lux Silver, which <laughs> you want to see my room, you can see in this beautiful Miri card. Whenever I do it on video, you can really see how uh, nice this paper is. But you're going to cut two of the decorative pieces out of your Lux Silver paper. So once you get uh, that die cut out, we're going to get some manganese blue ink and you're going to go around the edges of your base piece and then glue that uh, beautiful silver uh, piece on top. And you're going to do that twice. And then here we have our gatefold card. We're going to uh, glue these onto the panels 
And then that piece that you cut to five and three quarter by seven, you're going to put that right inside. Now, the important thing is, is you don't let your paper go over the seam of your fold because then you're going to have trouble folding it. So if yours is a little uh, smaller than five and three quarter, go ahead and trim an 18th of an inch off of it. That'll be fine. And just so it fits in there nicely. And you're going to have a hole in the middle because we cut that piece out. But that's okay because we're going to put something else in here. All right. So let's go ahead and attach this piece. You can just use glue. Now you might notice that my um, blue piece that I'm actually using today is a different one than you're using. And that's because I, um, I ran out of that piece. So I had to go find another blue piece that would work, but that's okay. You use the one out of the, the angel paper that is so pretty. On my original, it is the paper that you're using. <laughs> Whoops, there we go. All right, so this is where we should be. You've got your, uh, a gatefold card made now you will notice on the back that you're going to see a little bit of your edge and and that is okay all right if you wanted to you could cut a strip of paper and cover that up and make that a white but uh, um, that that's just if that bothers you and you want to okay all right so let's set that aside and we're going to go on to our uh stamping So we're going to start with the, the Starry Noel. You're going to need um, one of the Noel and go ahead and get this stamp out and we're going to use that in just a moment. Whoops, I'm out of the camera. I'm sorry. We're going to use the Noel and then go ahead and get this out and set it aside and we're going to use that in just a moment. Now we're also going to bring in our uh, festive poinsettias. And you're going to, out of the small festive poinsettia set, you're going to use this piece right here and you're going to stamp that twice in manganese blue. And out of our large festive poinsettia, we're going to use this one and you're going to stamp it twice in the manganese blue ink. Then let's see, what did I do? You're also the Noel stamp. You're going to stamp the Noel in the manganese blue. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that out so you can see that. The only other uh, stamp that we're bringing in is out of our large holiday star. So I know I'm using lots of product in this card. Like I said, it's very technique heavy. <laughs> so out of this large holiday star, you're going to stamp this one right here. And you're going to do that in the Versamark ink. All right. So in the Versamark ink, and then we're going to uh, heat emboss that. And I use the metallic uh, silver uh Platinum Sparkle from WOW. Now, any kind of silver embossing powder that you have on hand is going to work just fine. I just like this glittery one, but I also have um, some matte finished silver. Um, but really, whatever you have that is silver is going to look beautiful on this project. All right, so I also stamped the leaves and the little snowflakes from the star. Uh, and all of those are stamped in Versamark and, and then heat embossed. So once we get to this point, we can set this aside for a moment and we're going to go ahead and do our stamping of our angel. Now for our angel, I brought in three ink colors because we're going to kind of ombre her. Now I know that um, Emma Lou also ombre her angel yesterday, so you can certainly go back and watch her technique for doing that. I do it a little bit different, but uh, the results are very similar. So I start with my lightest ink and I start at the bottom. I go ahead and put the ink on there. Then I like to get one of our triangular dobblers and right where that line is of where the ink, I just tap on that. And that kind of fuzzes that out a little bit and prevents any harsh lines. You see how that stamps out? And I like to do it two or three times, but for the purpose of our video, we're just going to do it once. But um, you might want it to, if you want to get a really dark, solid color, you might want to do it more than once. So same thing, we're just going to put um, the Forget Me Not ink. I started out with the Aquamarine, and now the Forget Me Not ink, I'm going to do the same thing. We're just going to tap along that edge, blur that out a little bit. It looks like I didn't get enough solid ink right in the middle. So see, I, I would do that two or three times to get that nice and dark. And then to finish her off, 
we're going to do right up here on the top. And I like to kind of make it overlap, but we're just going to tap that. And same thing. And there we go. We have our beautiful angel and she is ready to go. Now I did this in advance, so I'm going to set these aside. So once you get your angel done, you can go ahead and um, die cut her and she'll be ready. She'll be ready for the next step. But before we die cut our flowers, I want you to get the forget me not ink. And let's see, here's my my dauber for the forget me not. And to do these flowers, we're just going to take a little forget me not ink on the tip of our uh, dauber and we're going to color the inside and then just run up that that. Uh, spine in the middle of the flower leaving plenty of white on all the edges so uh, to the best of my ability I'm leaving um, some white on there and that's going to give our our flowers a little more um, dimensionality by making it look like the light is hitting that flower when we get that all finished and I'll, I'll show you that when we get done so you'll do all your flowers the same way we're not going to do anything to the rest of them they are good to go so you can go ahead, when you get to this point, you can go ahead and die cut them. So how's everyone doing today? Have you started your Christmas crafting since we've been doing so much Christmas here uh, in the last few weeks? It has inspired me to get going. I have about half of my Christmas cards made. Okay, now while we still have our inks out and your embossing, I want you to go ahead and take um, your Versamark ink and I use the matte finish for this, but whatever silver you have, I went ahead and I stamped the, um, the background stamp on white paper, and then I embossed it in the silver. So go ahead and do that, but set that aside, and I'll show you what we're going to do with that a little later on. Okay, so the next thing we have to, to work on is uh, we've got our flowers die cut. So we're going to go ahead we have them about this stage and now you're going to get out your um, manganese blue again whoops wrong dauber and we're going to do just the tips of all these flowers and i want you to make those tips nice and and dark but make sure you're leaving some white space on your petal you see how that is All right, and go all the way around, and we're going to do this technique to all of our flowers. Okay, it just really brings them to life, doesn't it? Love that. Oh, I see Carol's here. I'm glad you're here today. And from from Margaretka, I, I'm butchering your name, and you're from Poland. It's so fun to see where everyone is from. It's great to see you. Okay, so once we get our flowers to this point, we're going to go ahead and get out our lovely molds. We've got the large festive poinsettia mold and the small. You're going to need both today. And for all of our uh, flower parts, we need to put them face down in the mold. And that includes all of your leaves, both the viney ones and the... Um, uh, the large leaves, but you're going to put all of them in face down. Whoops. There we go. And you're going to go ahead and run that through your die cut machine. So when you're done, you'll have a nice little pile of um, molded pieces. So I've got mine right here. Here we go. Whoops. Yep, I did. Okay, so I've got mine right here. And this one's already glittered, but I'm going to show you how to glitter them on this one. So that is our next step is we're going to work on the glitter. So go ahead and get out a, um, a little uh, stamping block and we're going to add just a little bit of glue. And I did a very similar technique when I made the, these flowers in the sparkly gold. But today, instead of heat embossing, we're just going to glitter the edges. And for the glitter, um, for these flowers, I'm using the Distress Glitter Dust. Now, Distress Glitter Dust is a Ranger product. So this would have to be purchased from the Ranger website. But it is a really fun glitter. All right, and the same technique we used before, we're just going to dab our, 
our tips in that and then just dip it into our glitter and that's going to give us uh, this beautiful glittery tips on the end of our flowers and I, I like to be random with it kind of some on each edge and, and get that just glittered up just a fast process there you go so now you're going to have glitter on all of these Okay, and do that to all of your petals. Now, if you have another glitter that you already have on hand, don't feel like you have to, to run out and buy a lot of things, but at the same time, if you like this glitter, um, that is where that comes from. Now, you can just wipe off your block, and uh, I have one block that I just dedicate for uh, these kinds of purposes. So the next thing we're going to do on our little angel we're going to use the crystal art glitter and this you can purchase on the heartfelt creation website it's a beautiful glitter it's a uh, very fine so it, it's nice to add to things like this because it it's a little fine more fine than some of the chunkies but we're going to just use the tip of our glue to very quickly appear in her body tap on and then on all of these bigger ones and again the clue that or the trick to this is by doing it quickly and I'm just tapping, trying to hit most of those glues, and then on the bigger ones, kind of outlining it. And the faster you go, the, the uh, less likely you'll have big globs. But uh, I'm just going to tap that on there. All right, and then we'll use our little tray and whoops, sprinkle some glitter over her. And there we go she is almost ready to go i don't know if you can see that but that just really makes those uh, stars sparkle all right all right now um on your white piece of paper that you stamped your um, angels on high a background die i want you to go ahead and die cut let me find the piece out of this set right here, the decorative circle frames, we need the one that is 2.5 by 2.5, and you're going to cut that out of white. And once we have that, we're going to go ahead and uh, the, the little circle that you cut out, um, you're going to ink the edges with the manganese blue, and then layer that, and that's going to be for our sentiment. So we have this uh, pretty Noel piece. We're going to go ahead and glue that into our sentiment circle and you can add some foam um, dots on the back and our sentiment will be ready to go just gonna do that real quick so right now um the the joyous noel collection uh, just launched and you can still get the i want it all that is good through this coming Saturday. So if you are interested in that, you'll want to go to the website and grab that I want it all before it disappears. That's a great way of getting the whole collection with a little bit of savings. Once the I want it all is gone, then you have the uh, Creative Essentials bundle and, and then all the individual sets. But uh, if you're an insider member, you can get save 20% on top of the I want it all bundle that is already discounted for you. So, all right, now that we've got our uh, sentiment ready and we've got our angel almost ready, we're going to get our deluxe flower shaping kit. We're going to get our mat and our stylus and we're going to work on these flowers just a little bit. Now, I only do this to the top layer of each flower. I like to turn it over and in the middle of each petal, I just press down. You see where I'm pressing? Just in the middle so that that tip pops up. And I go all the way around and I just do that. Then I turn it over and I make a circle. Now what that does is it makes these kind of come up and bend out. You see how that, how, let's see if I can get it. In the, Know, it's kind of hard to see but there there's a good view of it you get the comes up and bends out and I just think that kind of gives it a very pretty poinsettia look to do that and then on this bottom one oh here it is you know what I did I inked the wrong or I glittered the wrong one so I am just gonna do that real quick 
rather than getting my ink back out. This is the one that's shaped. I, I accidentally glittered the one that's not shaped. So we're just going to fix that real quick because it doesn't take long. There we go. There. Okay, so once you get those glittered, now on the bottom one, it is shaped through the mold, but I didn't add any additional shape to it. So once we're at this point, we're going to go ahead and glue those together. And I'm just, whoops, almost messed up again. What's with my mind today? All right, we're going to go ahead and layer those and put your more shaped one on the top. And see how that created a lot of dimension between our bottom layer and our top layer and just gives that a really um, kind of extra dimension. Our beautiful glitter on top. All right, so the next part we're going to do is we're going to grab the assorted uh, pearl medium and we're going to get out the silver. All right, and I've got quite a handful. I might have a few too many. I'm going to take a couple out, but quite a handful of these. And we're going to go ahead and um, add some stamens in the center of these flowers of our poinsettias. So you can use the golf tool. I like to use the large one. And we're going to poke that hole and then you're going to want to push that up. Now, one of my favorite things about this large golf tool, depending on how many stamens I can use, this golf tool really gives me the ability to control how wide my circle is. And that kind of helps me when um, adding those stamens. So that, that's probably the main way I use my golf tools. But once you do that, you want to make your hole um, fairly large so that we have plenty of room to pull the stamens through. All right, and I do have my glue gun here. Um, they were telling me that several people have been asking about my glue gun, so I wanted to real quickly tell you about my glue gun. It is the Bosch glue pen. It is wireless and cordless, and it doesn't plug into the wall. It has, uh, the way I charge it is at just a USB that plugs into my um, computer. So in my craft room, I have so many different things like plugged into the wall and into the outlet strip that I was just out of outlets. So when I saw that this one is um, cordless and could be charged with a USB, I just jumped right on it because that fit my needs. So I did have to order this online, but uh, that is the glue pen that I use. Okay, go ahead and we'll fold those over and feed them in. There. Okay, we're going to add a little bit of glue. Get in there, glue. Give it a second. There we go. Okay, squirt in just a little bit of glue and pull that down. And we've got a nice poinsettia with a large amount of stamens in there. I kind of filled these up to kind of bring in that silver. All right, we set that aside. Now, while we still had our mat out, what did I do with that? For my angel, I actually turned her over and I added some dimension to just her body, her head, and her wings. And I also put just a little dimension into the trumpet. Okay, I, I didn't do any dimension down here. So I have another one that that's already been done. And you can kind of see she has a little bit of dimension in her body, her wings, and the trumpet. And then down here, I left that flat. So where I added the dimension on the wings and the body, I added some foam tape. So you can go ahead and, and do that. All right. Now the last thing, you, you stamped and heat embossed some of these um, snowflakes from our starry, uh, what's it called? The large holiday star, <clears throat> excuse me. And we're going to use these to kind of make some sound coming out of her trumpet. So you can go ahead and get those out. So here are all of our pieces for our, for constructing our gatefold card. We've got the large and small, our leaves. There we go. Oh, and over here, our sentiment. So now we can just, we can go ahead and construct this card. And I'm going to save the last final bit for last. I'm going to start with the angel and place her. The reason I didn't put any foam or anything out here is because that's going to kind of overlap over the edge. I'm going to see where I'm placing her. And the only thing she's attached with are these two foams. 
I'm going to give you a tip for getting the foam off. If you shove your fingernail into the foam itself, then you can just use your finger to peel up that other piece. That's kind of a tip. Now, when you put this down, I like to just put my finger on that foam to make sure that I'm not going off of the... You want to make sure that that piece of uh, foam, the sticky part, doesn't come out over the edge or then you'll be, you'll be gluing it shut. <laughs> Nobody wants to do that. All right, now same thing for our sentiment. I'm going to go ahead and add that. And then we'll put on our flowers. All right. Now I like to tuck this up so that I can see that her little elbow comes down on, but at the same time, we want to make sure that none of our foam is going off over the edge again. There we go. So we've got her kind of tucked in right there. All right, for our flowers, I need to cut off the back of this one. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and add some hot glue. Put that right here. And I need to add a uh, little, my glue stick in here. For this one, just tuck some some leaves in here for the big one. For the big one, I used uh, these leaves, and then I'll show you what I did for the smaller ones. There we go. Now for, for the two smaller flowers, I put them over on the other side. There we go. So I think I've mentioned before that I'm in Texas and Texas has been just unseasonably warm. And someone told me in Pennsylvania, they were having 60 degree weather and it was like, it was registering like 104 at my house. And I was like, wow, that that's just, I would love to feel some 60 degree weather right now. So hopefully you are comfortable wherever you are and it's a lovely day. All right, so for for this, for the, the small ones on the other side, I actually took one of these and I cut off one of the, the, the leaves. And I did that because I wanted to pair up some leaves down here. So sometimes I just like to cut them apart to get some different looks. So I'll put some glue in there and tuck this in, kind of letting that uh, swirl come up over my angel. And then for up here, I had um, two of them that I went ahead and pulled off one of the, the petals. And up here at the top, I'm going to kind of make it look like this, but it will be uh, smaller. So we're just going to tuck those in up here. go and then one of these that have just one petal I'm going to put it down here on the other side there we go and then this last one that's got one petal I'm going to put it down here on my larger one there we go all right so now that we have the outside of our uh, gatefold card all ready to go Whoops, you know what? No, we don't. I forgot to add the music. I knew I would do that. Okay, so we've got these beautiful um, snowflakes. I'm going to go ahead and punch just a few of those out. And we're going to add those just up here to make our trumpet um, have some music coming out. So you don't, don't need all of them. I just did a few. And I'm going to attach these with the regular dry clear glue. Whoops. Jumping around. There we go. And I put one so that it's on our uh, sentiment. And then I took a few others here just to, at the end of that trumpet to kind of be like music notes maybe. You know, I just did three. And you can pick whichever size has come out. It really doesn't matter, but I put those just, whoops. He stuck to my finger instead of the paper. There we go. Okay. 
All right, now we have the outside of our card completed. And now to do the inside. So go ahead and set this part aside. And I want you to get your beautiful um, background piece that we heat embossed. And you can probably see around the edges here that I tore this. I wanted to give this kind of a antique music paper look. So what I did is I tore just right along the edge of the die itself, doing my best to get a nice tear edge. So you want to use a paper that, that tears pretty. So I just gave it a very, uh, you know, jagged edge with the, the tear line in there. So once I did that, then I went back and I got my um, manganese blue ink and I just, whoops, I'm sorry, you know what? I used the forget-me-not ink, forgive me. If this is forget-me-not ink. And I just lightly went over the edges so that you could see that tear mark. Right. And, and I got a little bit of it up on the sheet music on purpose, kind of around the edges to kind of give that um, some aged look. And kind of see how I did that up in there. See how there's a little more of the blue. I brought it down in there. But that, that's how I did that. And then to finish this piece off, I'm going to get my um, distressed glitter dust again and my tray. And I'm going to get one of our Hydra sponges and add a little bit of glue. Maybe a little bit more than that. There we go. And to do this, I'm going to take the sponge, and I'm not going to glitter all the way around. I just want some like random little glittery spots. Okay. Just kind of around. And I'm going to use a, well, if I can find my spoon, I'm going to use a little spoon to do this because I realized I didn't clean up my white glitter. So I'm going to just, you'll see how this works. You see how that just gives it like a neat little aged look? So I'm going to do that all the way around. My original here doesn't want to stay standing up. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So I'm going to do that all the way around, just kind of giving it uh, a little bit of glitter on the edges of my music sheet. And I really like the way this turned out. It looks really pretty inside the card. And I know I'm making a mess. I'm usually a little neater at this, but there we go. Set this aside. I'm going to show you another little product I have that's one of my favorite things. It's this little glitter vac. Look at that. It just zoops to clean up my face in no time. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so now that we have this piece done, I'm going to go ahead and add some foam on the back of this. And we are going to put pop that into the inside of our card. Don't need a lot, just enough to, to give that some definition. So bring back our um, beautiful card. Open her up. And we're going to add our pretty music sheet right on the inside. Make sure it's right side up. Okay. There we go. Look at that. All right, so we still have right here on our side, we can sign it, we can write a note, but we've got this pretty aged piece of music of angels singing on high. We've got our gatefold with our pretty angel trumpet trumpeting the coming of uh, Christmas and the new year. And there's our lovely silver glittery um, joyous Noel uh, Christmas card. So I hope you've enjoyed making this project. I'm going to go ahead and switch my camera back. It'll take me just one second. My my cursor disappeared. There it is. All right. Okay, there we go. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here today to make our Joyous Noel project. I had so much fun. I hope you enjoyed some of the techniques that we talked about in this uh, demonstration. 
And like I said, the I Want It All is available until this coming Saturday. Definitely, if you want to pick this set up, that is the best time to grab it. So if you are an Insider member, you can also save an extra 20% and take advantage of that free shipping. So if you have heard about our Insider membership, we will put the link in the uh, chat below so that you can click on that and check that out. So, all right. I hope you're all having an amazing day. And thanks again for crafting with me. I'll see you soon.